morning pot coins. Today is Sunday, 5 October 2014. We are currently on block 460661 of the pot chain. Here's what's been going on this week. The Potcoin guys have put out a super simple step-by-step -step guide with pictures to using Potcoin for the regular consumer and for the merchants. For a regular wallet, go to potwallet.com. Step 2, register. Step 3, generate an address. Step 4, get some coins. The guide suggests and recommends the community faucet, drippingpotcoins.com. I recommend asking your buddy that's into Potcoin to share a few, just so you can play with it and test it out. Step 5. Receive the coins and wait for confirmations. Now that you have some Potcoins, Step 6 is sending. If you don't know where to send your Potcoins, I have a donation address in QR form at the end of the video or in text form in the description below. If you don't want to share any of your pot with me, you can donate to a campaign on Potfunder or keep the faucet dripping by donating to that. If you have a lot of pot coins, spend them at any of the merchants accepting pot coin. There is also an option to send pot coins to an email address. I didn't get around to playing with that feature, but from the instructions, you enter in an email, uh, an amount of pot coins, and a password. The recipient will get a link where they can redeem the coins with the password that you provided. The other step-by-step -step guide is for setting up a merchant page. Again, potwallet.com and register. Step 3, under my account, go to the merchant page. Enter in the information and hit update. Step 4, now that your merchant page is set up, you get a custom URL. Step 5, Print the merchant page gives you a QR code and takes you to the payments page. You can save the image of the QR code or actually print it. Step 6. When someone scans the QR code and goes to the payment page, they can enter the amount in pot coins or in reserve notes and proceed to the checkout. Step 7. A payment address is generated and now the customer can send pot coins to that address. It comes in QR and text format. Last step. You have received your pot coins and you can check that in the transactions. I personally like it whenever someone takes the time to make a step-by-step -step guide with pictures. It's such a useful tool for beginners and one of the main focuses of Potcoin right now is to make it as easy as possible. You don't need to be a crypto nerd to get started, but hopefully once you do get started, you'll find the motivation to become a crypto nerd. Give them an inch and they take a mile. Freedom is inspiring more freedom. Don Willis is running for governor of Wyoming. And while he doesn't support smoking pot, he does support disobeying the federal government. Don likes killing wolves. That's how this whole thing started. The federal government has put a ban on killing wolves by placing them on a protected species list. Don said, Wyoming should allow the hunt despite the federal prosecution because Colorado has legal weed. From a logical standpoint, this is a fallacious argument as one thing has nothing to do with the other. But I do understand where he's coming from. The federal government should have no power over the states. And if hunters in Wyoming want to hunt wolves, the federal government can take a back seat to the state. He also said, the wolf tags have been issued and hunters have already made plans to start their hunts. The disruption to hunters, outfitters, and the cost to Wyoming Game and Fish to refund hunting permits caused by a single black robe judge who sits in Washington, D.C. and has probably never been to Wyoming is outrageous and should be defied by Wyoming. That, that's a much better argument than Colorado can smoke pot but he continued by saying, Colorado did just that in legalization of pot. It's a federal crime to commercially grow pot, and the state of Colorado defied the federal laws, and it all worked out fine. I don't condone or condemn hunting wolves, but I do support states governing themselves as they see fit. Hopefully this is a growing trend that will reduce the power of the federal government and give more power back to the individual states. 
a 3D printed Wi-Fi smart medical inhaler of the future. Israel is on top of the game these days when it comes to legitimate medical uses for pot. Psyche Medical Limited is a cannabis tech startup funded by the Israeli government. And they are producing a cannabis delivery system that will revolutionize the medical industry. Here's a video from them. Psyche Medical, introducing the world's first meter-dose cannabis inhaler. Cannabis and psychoactive substances hold great medicinal promise, yet are not considered mainstream medical drugs, as they do not fit the standard medical model of drug prescription. Introducing the Psyche Inhaler, the world's first medical device capable of administering cannabis in a true medical manner, consistently delivering meter doses with pharmaceutical level precision. Cartridges, preloaded with standardized cannabis flowers, retain all natural compounds in their raw form. Clinical trials have shown that the Psyche Inhaler is in a precision class of its own, while demonstrating significantly higher levels of efficiency. Contrary to current available administration solutions, the Psyche Inhaler's unprecedented delivery resolution of 100 micrograms allows for the precise balance between symptom relief and psychoactivity. Based on our emerging clinical data, treatment can be individualized by the Psyche Inhaler's automated dosing feature, enabling patients to reach an optimal balance and regain their quality of life. Physicians can monitor and simulate pharmacokinetics. Drug onset or any other psychoactively associated pharmacodynamics can be remotely prescribed, instilling confidence in physicians as a true medical drug. Researchers will gain access to an ever-expanding highest quality database of clinically used plants and strains. This novel small device allows us physicians to administer cannabis in a truly pharmaceutical manner. The revolutionary technology in the Psyche Inhaler allows us for the first time to administer cannabis in a precise and predictable fashion. This device gives us physicians the confidence to prescribe cannabis in the same way that we prescribe other drugs today. Finally, government and health agencies can recognize cannabis as a true medical drug. This breakthrough will dramatically improve the lives of millions of people around the world. This is one of the most groundbreaking technical developments related to pot that I've ever seen. I think this will help split medical use from recreational use. Patients that just want medical benefits don't necessarily want to get high and recreational smokers just want to get high. By splitting the focus, recreational strains will get you higher, while medical strains will get you healthier. JP Morgan hacked. 76 million private accounts and 7 million business accounts have been compromised. JP Morgan claims they're not worried because the hacker only got names and addresses and they think that bank accounts and social security numbers were not stolen. The attack started earlier this year, possibly in June. It was discovered in July and in August it was suspected that about 1 million accounts were compromised. But this past week, after going through the data, it turns out that it was actually 83 million accounts. It's scary to think that someone has all that data, and it's even scarier to think what they might do with it. If those 83 million people were smart enough to store their money in bitcoins, there would not have been any personally identifiable information to steal. But then again, out of 83 million people, probably 80 million of them would have kept those bitcoins in a hot wallet and not had access to their own private keys, so their money could have been stolen. The lesson to learn here is to maintra maintain control over your own money and don't trust banks, not even Bitcoin banks, but especially not fiat banks. The rise and rise of Bitcoin is finally out. This documentary has gotten a lot of hype over the last few months 
and it premiered this past Thursday in New York, LA, and Cleveland. It's also available for pre-order on iTunes with an expected release date of 14 October. I haven't seen it yet, but I plan on it soon. This week's Business of the Week is a rerun from a few months ago. Here's that old clip. This week's Business of the Week is Chronic Star Edibles. They were one of the first businesses to start accepting potcoin. Chronic Star produces some amazing looking edibles. I haven't tried them, but I've read a few reviews and everyone that has ordered from them was satisfied. Chronic Star ships worldwide and they claim a 99% plus delivery rate. As long as you use a valid address, you should get your order. They also have a recommended dosage page so you know how much to eat. If you're into edibles or are just interested in trying them, check out Chronic Star. That's all for this edition of Mad Pot Coins. Smoke them if you got them.